I don't know why. Starting the recording. There's Dinesh. Um, Kayla cannot join us. So after you start the meeting, I'm just going to say who's here and who's not here from being a from our commission. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Before we go to audience, I'll just say that we're going to We can start at six. Do you need a Yes, we do. Uh, there's one gem without the agenda. Like, I needed the agenda. Oh, you got the agenda. Oh, okay. okay. All right, we can start. Okay. Uh, we officially open up the meeting for a Parks and Rec Commission. And I know we have audience of citizens. Jen, do you want to? Before audience of citizens, um, commissioners absent are Andrew Lignani and Joe Bolchi. Everyone else is in attendance. Okay. All right. Tom. Um, I do have some uh, prepared remarks for you, and I will provide you with a copy of that just so we can follow up. That's not long. Is this the same letter you sent me, Tom? Uh, no, these are my uh, statements. Okay. I do have copies of the letter. Sorry. Thank you, Madam Chair, Mr. Vice Chair, and members of the Commission. Thank you for having me here today. I really appreciate the time you have taken to fit me into your undoubtedly busy schedules. My name is Tom Martorano. I currently reside in New Britain. A little background information on me. I'm a graduate of Willard, McGee, and Berlin High. I competed in Borough and Little League and Babe Ruth. I was on the McGee wrestling team my entire tenure at the school, as well as the varsity wrestling team for Berlin High for two of my four years there. My wrestling team is currently awaiting induction to the Hall of Fame in Berlin for our state championship run back in 1999-2000. Uh, I also worked with Debbie Dennis back in 2005 as a lifeguard and assistant director of personal pool. <clears throat> I come to you this evening in petition of an official name for the large baseball field located at McGee Middle School. I have been made aware that such a request, if deemed proper by this commission, must also pass the muster of the Board of Education, being as located on school grounds. I have no doubt that this commission and the Board of Education will agree with me and my other family members present here on my proposal. My father, Jim Martirano, has been Berlin's unsung hero of young men, young women, boys and girls for over a quarter century. <clears throat> any child that has passed through Berlin baseball in any degree, shape or form has been impacted by my father. Not only as a coach, when my brother and I were in Little League, but as an umpire, and of course, the chief umpire for the town. He has spent decades of his life dedicated to the education, empowerment, and sports prowess of what has now been generations of Berlin's youth. While he is gratefully still alive, this is not an honor that has to wait until he passes. This would be an honor to a man that has not sought any public commendation, recognition, or glorification for the job that he lives and the job and lives that he has impacted, nor has he received any such honor that he is due. Naming the baseball field at McGee would be fitting for this man, not only because of his work he has done with middle school age children, but because of the true to life skills he has empowered them with. Perfectly fitting for a baseball field located at a school. Many times the children that my father recruits for umpiring Little League games get their start at the middle school level. He trains them in real life skills such as punctuality, professionalism, time management, money management, and most of all, to play by the rules and to be able to hold others accountable earning the respect of other children and adults alike in the process, something that I believe every child needs. He gives them the chance to earn that respect, to succeed, to be honorable, well before they step foot into a retail or business setting later in their lives. Thank you for this time. Thank you for your time this evening and join me in celebrating my father. Join me in honoring him. Join me in telling his story. Join me in adv advocating for more men like him to step up and train our children. Join me in allowing this man to witness the honor and respect he has earned. A man that has given and continues to give everything to everyone. A man that has asked nothing of anyone in return. Join me in naming the baseball field at McGee Middle School as Jim Martirano Field at McGee. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak? 
Just remember, say your name and full address. Okay. Um, Debbie Martirano, 25 Woodbine Court, Berlin. Um, I'm not sure how many here know Jim Martirano, but if you had kids or even now grandkids in Berlin Little League or any Berlin umpire program, then you surely know him. Jim has been an integral and vital part of Berlin sports and athletics since he was a child. His participation and dedication probably spans more years than many here have been alive. Um, his involvement in the Berlin sports programs started as a youngster himself, playing under the coaching of his dad and being named to the Little League All-Star team, 1968, 69, to Babe Ruth All-Star, 71, 72. In 1968, 69, 70, Jim, as a youngster, placed first place in local, state, and regional major league baseball pitch, hit, and throw competitions, going to compete in the national semifinals at Fenway Park. 67, 68, 69, and 70, again first place in local, state, and regional national football leagues. Pass, punt, and kick competitions, competing in national, national semifinals at New England Patriots Stadium. From 72, four varsity letters in football, two in baseball, one in track, all conference team football, 73 as an offensive lineman, all conference 74 lineman and punter, earning several football scholarship offers, VMI, SMU and others. Played semi-pro football for Hartford Knights and New England Crusaders before an ankle injury ended his football career. He set the record for javelin toss in Berlin High School, not to mention Cub Scout leader, Boy Scout leader, church leader. I can go on and on, but I think you can see the level of dedication and determination that he has. Jimmy has contributed much to the sports programs in Berlin for well over 50 years bringing much honor to Berlin and co contributing immensely to the sports town reputation that Berlin enjoys. It would be a generous and profound honor to have a previously unnamed field at McGee to be named after a man who has brought much to Berlin. Thank you. Hi, <clears throat> Yep. Just a little bit. Jason Martirano, currently of 120, Connecticut Avenue, New Britain. I didn't really prepare anything, but I can't really add to what my brother and mom have already said here. But um, uh, some, some of you, Steve and Don, have worked personally with my dad for a number of years, and uh, I, I doubt you can say anything bad about the guy. Um, if you could find anything, I'd be surprised. Um, he's worked, uh, obviously, with the kids, the adults in Berlin for, for a number of years, and, uh, and, and deserves this, this great honor. You can't really put into words some of the some of some of the things that he's done. You can't quantify a lot of the a lot of things he's done to help raise up our, our, our youth. But um but he's he's done a great job in raising better humans for, for, for everybody for, for the town. And he's, he's living that out through me too, and he's gonna continue doing that until the day that he passes, until he can no longer do it. So uh, it would be a great honor for him, for our family as well. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, I am Rosie Andrew Carey. I live at 36 Main Street in New Britain, Connecticut. Uh, I didn't have anything prepared, uh, and I can't add anything more that's already been said, but I've known Jim Martirano for over 50 years, and if anyone is deserving of this honor, it's this man, because he's worked tirelessly for the children of um, Berlin. Um, so I hope you take that into consideration when you make your decision. Thank you. We would welcome any questions if you do have those. So if not, perfectly fine. Anybody have any? Honestly, I, you know, first of all, thanks for coming. I, I've known Jim for a number of years as well, being part of Little League. But I didn't know all the other things that you just mentioned about his sports career, actually. I didn't know he played for the Hartford Knights. I didn't yeah. know he was all conference and so forth and so on in football. I didn't realize that he did all that. I mean, my involvement with Jim has always been around umpire, right? And, and working with Jason and my son and other other young young athletes. So when I when I first heard about that, my first reaction was, 
well, I know Jim does a lot of umpiring, but I didn't know some of the other stories, right? And so, Tom, when you read off about some of the things that, you know, he, he, he trained real life situations, I really never got that from him doing the umpiring thing. Only because, you know, when you're, when you're doing umpiring and so forth, it's really about, you know, umpiring. You, I, know he, I know all the kids got paid to do that and so forth and so on. But I didn't really put into perspective some of the other things that you mentioned here about time management, money management, probably because of the fact that the way you were looking at it was more from the standpoint of, okay, you're getting your first time little job, right, with a paycheck. So, so I didn't really kind of put that in perspective until you, you just mentioned it. Um, but, but I'm going to throw out this idea only because um, this based off of what I'm sorry, did you miss one run? I'm sorry, I didn't get yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, I didn't realize the things that you mentioned about Jim. And so to me, um, I, and I don't know if there's something out there that the town offers. Um, I'm part of, I grew up in Plano, right? So we, I'm part of the Plano Hall of Fame. And I know Don is as well. That's what I was going to Yeah, say. we have something. But we have something there called the Distinguished Service Award, which is which is a pretty high honor for individual people that do go up and beyond more than than just. I, I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm just. Yeah, I'm, I'm just. 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 I'm to, to me, to me, and again, this is just me speaking out loud. To me, it almost seems like it's more of a distinguished service award than naming a specific field um, after Jim, based off of what you just read and, and what I did not know about Jim. Because I, honestly, it sounds to me more, it's bigger than just baseball. Based on what I just read. That, that's just me listening to the family talk here. It, it, it's, it, to me, it's bigger than baseball, but, you know, and maybe just. Yeah. No, I understand. Yeah. I understand that, but then you could also say that that there are many other people that have passion for a specific sport as well, right? You know, <laughs> you go back and you look at you know Ted Swanson. You go back and look at Mr. Gordfried, All the, all that group of people that worked with Bill Pettit around building building what we know today as Bro Baseball and all the different fields, right? So to me, and again, I'm just making a comment as as an individual, an outsider looking in because I. I only knew Jim from up my room, and I'm just making a more broader stuff, broader statement. And it, it, it sounds like it's more deserving of broader, broader type of distinguished service award, I think, than, than a few. That, that's just. I, I believe that would be fitting as well. The achievements that we've listed date back to his service as a, a servant of the town for a right. and. What I am trying to portray is the service that he has done over the past quarter century as an umpire, as a coach, as the umpire in chief in Berlin. And I think that's where the impact to the town has been made generationally. Got it. Yeah, again, just something new that I did not know of Jim until tonight. So thank you for sharing that with me. Yeah, thank you. Any other questions, comments? Oh, I thought you guys did a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And it's always nice to learn something new because again, I never <laughs> next time I see Jim, I, no, I just I can, too. Yeah, no, I just I just want to go on and on about just, you know, but, just yeah. something new that I that I just learned. So. Thank you. Okay, so what normally will happen is um, the commission will discuss. Uh, your submission tonight. Uh, I'm not sure if we'll vote on it at all tonight. Sometimes we'd like to take our time and yeah, think that. next through a little bit more, especially if in the field. Um, and, uh, and, and we'll go from there. So Jen will be in contact yeah, already, with you. I already talked to Tom about how the vote may be pushed to August to give people time to reflect on everything that was said tonight. So we'll be I'll be appreciate the submission and I'd like the commissioner said you did you really did a very nice job of presenting yourself and your, your husband, your dad, and your friend. Yeah, thank you. And if you need any other information, you'd be happy to supply us. Reach out. With. Okay, great. Thank you. Yes. I'll reach out to you tomorrow. Let you know. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. You really appreciate it. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Take care. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay.
Okay, so with that, um, we have no further items of the room. Okay. And I wasn't here, so I can't vote. Can I vote the office? Right. Or maybe you guys were here last week. We're up. Make sure we have enough. That's a form, right? Yeah, so if I can. And a motion for the approval of minutes from June 10th. Second. Second. Tony seconded. Uh, any discussion, comments on the minutes? Okay, hearing none. All in favor of accepting the minutes of June 10th, say aye. Aye. So four and then five. Yep. Okay. Uh, consent agenda. Uh, once again, Tony has done a superb job yep. presenting the boosters. Um, can I have a uh, motion to accept con consent agenda item A? I'll make a motion to accept consent agenda item A for all high school boosters. Thank you, President Banners, for 21 23 school year at Sage Park. I'll second. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any discussion or questions? None of you went right through softball and see so I this is all this is all done. So it's all done. Well, uh, it's all well known machines on the early sounds. Yeah. It's all on the picture with Louis Flurry. That was my friend. I tried. <laughs> um okay, so with that, all in favor of accepting consent agenda item A. Unanimous. All set. To yeah, thank you guys. Okay, um, can I hear a motion to accept consent agenda item A, which is um, for uh, Timberland Pavilion to be used by the class of 69? I make a motion to uh, approve consent agenda item B, request by Paul Carlson, the agent's class of 69 for permission to consume alcoholic beverages. Bear in mind, I'm trying to be appointed out the person at the moon park for a class reunion on September 18th. Any seconds? Okay. Any questions? I just have a question. Yeah. Um, did we tell her not to come? She was unable to come, so I told her that if they had any questions, that I, if you guys had any questions, I'd be able to. Just yeah. making sure. Yeah, no, I, I had asked her if she could come, and she said she sure. wasn't able to. So. No questions. And they may not actually even do alcohol. They didn't know that they were allowed to do alcohol. So once I told them that, they decided to put in the request for it just in case they decided sure. to. They may not do it. How will, how will you know if they decide to do it? I'll tell her that she has approval. And if she has approval, she'll go through the process to get two of insurance which they have to provide to us. OK. But she won't do it. She won't she'll allow talk. alcohol unless she gets the insurance. Yes, yeah, that's our right. Okay, um, any other questions, comments? Okay, hearing none. Uh, all in favor accepting consent agenda item B? Yeah. Yes, thank you. Okay, parks and grounds, please report. Um, pretty basic. I mean, pretty much trying to catch up with all the moment, the flowers, the heat that we've had over the last month. Um, and at the same time, as we actually hosted a CIAC. Semi playoff game up at Safe Park. There were a couple hundred people there. The game happened, it was, I think it was the you know, second game only in the state to play on that day with the rain that was going on. It's just a great event. The guys did a great job. The CIAC reached out after with a thank you letter for the job our guys did. So it was great. But that's nice. That's it for the parks and grounds. That's a huge knowledge. Yeah. State of Connecticut grant update is um, not too much different from last time. We have submitted, I believe Kevin has submitted. The project scope for the two projects that we're focusing on at first to see where that money falls in, which is the conversion of natural uh, to synthetic surf surface at Piscataway Field with all the amenities of protective netting and scoreboard as an alternate. Um, and the other project is the Jumbotron scoreboard at Schools. So we, we chose to submit two first and then see what happens. Is that why? To see, to see once the folks come back on how we've split the fund, the full funding into those two projects, which is what we talked about as a committee. And um, if there's money left over, we'll look at other options. So then the scoreboard, how much, do you know how much you put into the scoreboard? Because 
Is that going to be more expensive? Like they allocated like three fifty or something. Yeah, like and I think it's it's around. I don't know the exact number. It might be like three seventy five. I don't know if you remember exactly or not, because it's including all the fiber that's going to the field. That's the that's, that's the price. Right, that's it. We had estimated that. Yeah. So it was very close to what was estimated at that meeting. And the rest went to Scaglio. Yeah. Scaglio, I think, ended up being two point seven or two point eight. Okay, any questions on that? Nope. Banners? Banners I put on there because I'm going to send an email out to field users for the policy. They're supposed to come to the August meeting and present. I also included in my email to you what we had, what you guys had discussed with Kurgill Pettit last year. I want to be able to send him a reminder. I just wanted to get a gauge from you guys on, I expect we want him to come to the August meeting. And according to the minutes from the last last year, it's come with a plan of replacing the wooden signs at Berta. How are we sticking with that? Okay, I wasn't at that, that meeting a year ago or whatever, yeah. but that is that's exactly what happened. We actually tried to call him, right? We yeah. actually yeah. called him here. Yeah. He then he actually showed up outside the parking lot and we spoke to him about it. And the last time I saw him, he said, Do I really need to submit? My information to the banners. I said, Yes, please do it because everyone else has to do that. And that was, I think, in the early beginning of baseball rules. So I think um, that is actually stated. So, Jen, have, did, have you spoken to him since? No, I was waiting okay. because August is the one. I just want to make sure. I mean, basically, we spoke to him a year. Have you done Yes, we did. Yeah, we did. Okay. I know. I mean, I'm okay with that. So, so well, I mean, and, and remember, me, before you go there, Jen, remember it was it was even greater than um, Moretta Field because you brought up the fact that there were those couple signs right, all on the on the side there when you're going in front of um, the East School, past Willard, walking well, inside yeah. there, signs were facing the street. Yeah, that yeah, was that was those were taken down. So, yeah. so, anyways, sorry, Jen. No, and then basically it just said what we said in the minutes. Um, the commissioners are aware that the existing wooden signs have been in place for many years and are not easily removed or rehung. Out of respect for Burn Liberty and the long-term sponsors, the commission will consider temporarily approval on the signage as is, which is what you guys did. Out of respect of other organizations that prepared layouts and schedules and presented them to the commission for approval per the banners policy, Little League should be held to the same set of guidelines in future seasons. So that is for coming up on this fall. Yeah, and let him know that if he's not planning on replacing them, he still has to just come and say that he wants to keep them. Because right. yeah, that's such a lot of well, Let me ask you one of those signs is power and poles. Right. This was out of the business. Not even in the business anymore. Right. So, I mean, why are we. Good point. Yeah. Good point. So I, it's, I it's, it's almost out. like he needs to take pictures. I mean, he, he's mm -hmm. going on a computer. We don't need, I don't think. Unless the commissioners, you don't need paper copies of all this stuff, but you know, we, maybe we can throw it on a computer and we could just see. But so, so I, the maybe signs, talking to Bill is a better thing, you know, because we're reading this. You know, the banner signs at other fields that they use look very nice, right? they're colorful, they can come on and off easily. Those wooden signs there, they're antiquated. Yeah, like right. it's not a full staff there, like you can just. Send somebody over there. They, they used to take them down and paint them. Right. And all that. That. So I don't know what they're, what they're not this, doing. Well, this is the off the record. This is the reason oh. why it's because of the fact that nobody wants to do it. He has a he has a core group of couple of people. It's like anything else we yeah. today. So my, my recommendation is he call Bill. And if he gives you a hard, hard time about it, then maybe we just call Dave DeGroff. Dave DeGroff is the vice chair, I think, of the week. Okay. If I'm not mistaken, and maybe we could dig. Yeah, I was going to say there's other guys there. Yeah. I'll call him and tell him he expected to come to the office meeting with a presentation of what he wants on the baseball. Yeah. So at the end of the day, you can still be the same size there if he doesn't get the Yeah, so maybe you can give me the example. Yeah. Right? The insurance company, they're out of business. The old it's ones that are out. Power. Powers, bowls, and cool hands. Our powers, bowls, and cool hands, and churns, agency. They sold our two 
and there are two queens. I mean, it's got you know TQs up there, burning steel. Yeah. I mean, there are bolts to the butt. Just gonna ride, ride on all around it. Right. We can definitely urge it down, but he still has to push it. We're gonna yeah. ask, how do you maintain? We used to take them down, take them up every year. We don't see that happening. Yeah. You know. Let me just like who's the pioneer user of uh Loretta? What group it's of, older group? Yeah, it's like oh, it's like eight yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Not, it's yeah. after the movie set next to the set next level one. And isn't there like a work like a group of fathers or whatever I, that I don't know who's doing that they want that. I feel like that's okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well somebody must like we you know that we cut the grass and all that, but we we also know that dads come out do a lot more. Yeah, so yes. so why yeah. they have absolutely no problem. Yeah, I think that's that's the problem. Reach out to the I agree with Bill versus doing an email just give a call. Yeah, that's why I was saying. And the, the other thing I wanted to ask is um am I misreading the policy about the dates wrong? Um because I thought it's July the fall season. I thought it was August. Well we did it August last year because we were late. We were you just just it, right and okay. we asked for that one month. But then it says here for future years, July, full season, full season, yeah. and March, spring, and summer. I probably just had August in my mind because yeah. that's what we did last year. So moving forward, we'll switch to July this year. I mean, it's only going to be probably Billy Pettit Jr. and Bill Pettit for Little League. I mean, those are the only two I really expect to come in August. Youth Soccer doesn't put up banners, and the Bronx doesn't put up banners. So. Okay. Soccer, they don't get any they may at some point. Yeah, I would. I would. Yeah, I, 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 I talked to yeah. John about that. This is like trying to get people to do it. I, I told Mike what the advertising, so I don't like to go back. The cycle. The problem is, is like, where would we? Right, you guys are all over the place. Right. You're a lot, of, a lot of deals. You're yeah. 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 That's the challenge. I mean, we played. We played Denny and Paul. Stay in front. Hey, watch. Yeah. Here's something. Well, it, the sky field, we're going to have to think about that one a lot because as we have different teams playing there at different times, once yes. that's done, plus it's on board of the LCA, we got to want to consider this school's obviously going to want to hang out with me. If they, if they do it for freshman sports, they yeah. might play there. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, Pistol Creek Dog Park. I apologize. I meant to get you guys what I had read, and I never did do that. But, so I owe it to you. But no, it's it's in the packet. What you sent me? The email, the draft? No, 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 no. That was no. I was going to send you. Remember we were talking about the leash law versus no leash oh. law. And I said I thought there was something that said it couldn't uh, be off leash on a dog park, and that it could be that that's what they're intending to. Yeah, put right in. now there's no leash law. But I meant to actually, and I should. We should provide the coordinates that they're proposing. I can email that out tomorrow. Yeah, so if you could just, that would be helpful. That's what I refer to, and, they, and you'll see it in red what they're changing or when they propose. Nothing's been done yet, but Wait, what are you talking about in red? I was going to send coordinates about the no leash law. There's a new ordinance that they're, they've been considering for a while, and it's actually on the ordinance committee minutes. That's where I. And it's the new, what would be the new ordinance, and in oh, red okay. are new points that they want to add to it. And so again, that's where I may have gotten confused before they came. Okay, so I'll send the out. In the right place for parks. Just very clear. And, you know, that dogs off the shelf parks. I think that's what it should be. And, okay. Just to throw this out there, we've received several complaints over the last. Three or four months regarding people having their dogs on a high school track on yeah. playing fields. I've seen them. Yeah. There's no ordinance, there's no policy, there is nothing in writing that says you can't take your dog on. So we have no jurisdiction to throw anybody off. Even on that track, that million dollar track? Wow. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, and, and we've checked this out. I mean, there's, there's, there's no leash law in town, there's no prohibited. 
Because when we when you brought up a couple weeks ago about Hubbard Park, yeah. I called Jan and she said, Yeah, we've had this complaint before on playing fields, tracks, playgrounds. There's no rule saying you can't have dogs there. The only ordinance that states is you have to clean up that We we can say we can say that. We can put a sign up that says no dogs in play, right. which we have at almost every one of right, right. We can walk in there and say no dogs in play. All the person has to say to us is, where does it say that? And there's no infraction that no, animal control can offer. And it's the same way in Rocky Hill because we reached out to them to see what their policy was. And everybody's policy is the same. It's not in their ordinance. In this new ordinance, ordinance, it's very clear. And that, that would be what would give you. But I ask you guys to look at that and also send it to the commission. Yes. Just, when I read it, like I said, I must have misinterpreted that it's our, some of it's already in place. But please read it and make sure it takes that ability away from I mean, That's the intent of it. And they should act. But we got to have a separate ordinance that says no dogs on they, playground. They actually no say, dogs on playground for athletics. We go out there with a leash. Yeah. They actually say, look. Well, yeah. You read it. Okay. I'll send it up. Okay. Okay. So we'll we'll get that out to you. Um, and then in the packet, I had summarized points that I think were made. I was on Zoom for that meeting, so um, I summarized points. I do think we need to provide the ordinance committee, which is really the subcommittee of the uh, town council, with our thoughts about this decree and perhaps. We should amend this to include your comments about you know complaints and people are doing it right now. So there is a real need to get this loose law going separate from this break, something like that, right? Yeah. Um, but anyway, so this is what I summarized. Uh, Art is available for process creep from the field being considered. Uh, there's obviously a couple of handicapped spots on the same side of the field. And if they decide that this will freak, um, you know, we got to make sure that they're on a leash until they get to that open or fenced area. I don't know how, how you control an open area. But again, I'd be concerned the walkers. You have your summer camp, I know. It's in the back of the facility, but somebody kind of they parking go, up. sometimes they go across the street though. They'll take oh, the kids out here and walk. Yeah, okay, so not, not a lot, but they, if it's they're looking for something to do with that, they'll take it from Right. So you know that would if you, if it's an open field, you might take that ability away from yeah, so yeah. Um so we should amend that to say you also some parts of the fields across the street. Yeah. Even though it's not a lot, I would have to. Do you have a yeah. copy of this? I, I don't have the. I don't you have look the at it, that's one of the concerns that, we, well, that I had was on the summer camp. You're running the summer camp, so. If there's burning, then, you know, it's for the men to have to. And then yeah, I just think in general, though, that a lot of like I because obviously I'm out there every day now, and a lot of people bring their kids out there, especially in the summer, to walk. So when if you have dogs, you just want it loose. We all know that. You know, people nice. might think they're under their control, but they're really not. Yeah. So all you need is one situation, and it's see a squirrel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, well, it's right. Just yeah. with little kids from dogs. So, yeah. Um. And again, I, I was trying to get the sense from, from you guys how you felt. I don't know. I don't want a dog park there personally. I don't want I, unless it's completely fenced in. I wouldn't put a dog park there. But this is a commission, so I was trying to use what I thought I heard. So is there another area if, if they put a dog park there and it's fenced in that the cost about 15 can warm up? My understanding is that they warm up, and that would be the, the starting place where they would stretch out. So I think that issue's got to be resolved. Yeah. And I think that issue has to be resolved with the AD and cross country yeah. coaches because I know there's some. Be right. Because they're, I don't think they're aware of this thought part being proposed there. Right. I know Paul. So, and I think Paul's not. I don't know if he's communicating with Dave or they're just on different ends because you had said Dave's also looking to bring it back to Sage Park. So they're, they're not on the same. Yeah, so I think that has to be resolved through 
board of ed personnel for yeah. the but, but so again, that. the council, you know, they're acting and they're not asking us for our opinion, but we need to give it to them because yeah. they're going to act on it and they would come back to us and say, why didn't you even let us know this stuff? So, well, I don't know but, that's so we can move, but September, we're going to yeah. have track or cross country meetings there. Right, right. So, so the wordings, in, is it the E, Amper, Ohio? No, the yeah. E, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, so, so that's good. Is that wording okay, item B? Yeah. So prior to any decision on their home meets at 53. Yeah. All VHS and E meets. And there's only been some slight talk from AD Franklin India about moving to Sage. And he's got pushback from the Crossology coach. So, so you know, that's that's between them. Yeah, I mean, but, but at least we know they're using They're not moving it, they're showing up there. So right. So, so item B is good. Yeah. Okay. Um, item C, again, it's kind of more focused on the walkers. And I, you know, I said that should be our number one priority. Again, this is just my word. So, please let me know. And I didn't, you know, I highlight strong unanimous. I didn't know how we we're going to vote on this document. So, did they designate a specific area on that site yet? Yes. Yeah. I mean, is there a need for an additional dog park? That so, the problem, the issue is that Bicentennial Park, people go in through. Why is that? Yeah. And it's a residential area. There's a circle at the end where people, a few cars can park. There is no parking provided in that area. So, the neighbors. I don't know. Not all neighbors, but some neighbors are not happy. Um, and it's unleashed, but it is not, it is not a dog park. And it is not an unleashed dog park. There is nothing that by Centennial has been named, but people have been using it and the town has allowed them to use it. And in fact, I went to the ordinance committee uh, Zoom and um, what was identified is Berlin is the only town that has this or unleashed dog park, which it's not, but it's used as such in the whole state. There's not another town. A woman came from Hampton and talked and said, I love coming to your unleashed dog park, you know, and they said, well, frankly, thank you, but we don't do this for you. Well, so, thanks, thanks for coming. Yeah, yeah. there's a little can here. Right. Right. <laughs> so, so the ordinance committee wants to, Yes, establish a leash law. And then secondly, designate a dog park. And um, they may stay with Bicentennial, but then Pistol Creek was identified. And, you know, it was presented. Uh, they presented the map. Uh, and I think that the last meeting, you guys also gave us a copy of that. It showed us the field. That's totally how uh, you commented. And but that says unleashed. Which no, and so it's to be decided it's whether so you get, but, but not your paper you handed out. Yeah, that was yeah. But the town council is also considering whether or not it should be fenced in in that field. So again, it's an open thing. A lot of people, a lot, a lot of citizens commented on uh, dog owners. I don't. We don't like a fenced in area because it brings out the worst of dogs. Other people commented, don't make a problem at Pistol Creek if you had a problem at Bicentennial. You know, that type of thing. A lot of walkers talked about Pistol Creek and how you, you know, we're, we're going to ruin it and things like that. So I, I listened. I, I didn't make any comments because I wanted to understand what they were talking about. And uh, so that's that's what it is. They looked for other parts, right? They looked for other we areas. Checked out several other areas. Right. So, Bicentennial could be reached by other parking lots and then they go off of one side. True. And that's what a lot of bicentennial users are saying. There's not a right. problem here, you just need to establish parking. Right. The people who take the dog to bicentennial don't use the other areas to get the bicentennial. They all go to the wine set, they park at the wine set. They don't park at the wine set. They don't park at Chapelski, they don't park at 
Tap it's kind of nice. Cross Creek. Uh, and then you go over to the And if you fence in Pistol Creek, there's still going to go to Bison Bay. It's not rich because it's not fenced. Well, it's not that's, see, that's where the town would shut it down, though. I mean, that's what they wanted. To, like, it'd be one area, yeah, whether it's fenced or unfenced. So, we don't need another dog. We see what he's on. Well, you could say anywhere you bring a dog, you leave a leash. Yeah. But you also don't want dogs on a leash going on a track or on the fields. Yeah. And so, the problem isn't just the leash wall at Bicentennial, it's the parking. It's one set of rural residents that. You don't feel safe because the dogs are right there or the parking's out of control. Yeah. So There's some guy on that street that runs out of it. Go across the I think I read something like that. Yeah, yeah the guy right, right there. Yeah. Right. He, he the yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So so that's what they're deciding. They're, and what might happen is that they take a vote just on the leash law part and they would still allow people to use bicentennial until they figure out whether it's bicentennial, Mr. Creek, or nowhere. But at least with this one, Creek, we, we don't have jurisdiction over bicentennial. Um, yeah. Conservation Commission does, which go totally against having many dogs there um, that we should provide this. Hey, welcome. Any address? How are you all? Any address? Sorry for being late. Here, you want to address it? So, so beyond this, I don't know if you had a chance, but if you could maybe tell me how to tighten up item A. Uh, I thought it looked, I thought it looked fine. I mean, it's okay. So I said you operate the building in the back deck in the field, but you, but you do use the fields across the street. Well, yeah, it's not necessarily the field as much as they will take them walking on that path. Oh, okay. it's a nice okay. area for them to just go and walk around. All right, so not that they do it every day, but it is an option for us. Uh, okay, so the camper sometimes yeah. use the, the, the walking paths. Walks the course. Okay. Okay. Are there any other? Considerations that we should be adding. Any other thoughts? Other than, do we want to add something about you need to act? And we also believe we need to act on that leash law immediately because we've got complaints of people walking with a dog on a track. I got the vibe based on the meeting that that is their priority. The leash law is the priority. The location of the dog park, whether it's fenced or not, is going to be put to the side for now. That's the vibe I got as the mayor was kind of saying, okay, we're going to have another ordinance meeting and we'll take a look at the ordinance and the next meeting we're going to vote on whether or not we're going to do the leash law. I think, I think they want to, they're, they're pushing to get that done. Right. So, the leash law though also has to say, however, no dogs, no pets are allowed on whether leashed or not. Track, baseball field, softball, you know, field yeah. that are used for sports for children. Okay, so I'm going to look at that first. So, is it appropriate? Because I think the ordinance committee is going to meet. I just looked, yeah. there's nothing scheduled in July right now. Okay, okay. council is meeting. Well, they sure. don't meet in August, but I, I don't think know it, if they would schedule an ordinance committee in August or not until September. I'm not sure. They might still schedule something for July. Um, right, I think they were trying to meet again in July, but so I'd like to get this to them. Um, so, I what I'd like to do though is fix some of the wording and then send it out in an email and ask you to vote. It's public. You can uh, put okay, it so agenda together. I can't do a vote via an email. All right, so I don't necessarily think it's anything you formally have to vote on, if it's just the thoughts of the commission that you want to bring forward to council. And you would just say to audience and citizens at an ordinance meeting, then you don't need a vote, I don't think. Well, I'd like to say it's our commission. Well, yeah, like, why so mean, why don't we vote and then just yeah. allow me, if you would, uh, the motion would allow me to add wording sure. to make sure the council acts immediately on uh, sure. no, no pets allowed on tracks and things like that. So, that's that's fine. Fine. so, so, so. That's fine. Shouldn't it be bifurcated? Something we should say that you know there should most important thing is there should be a leash law 
And then for consideration of um, the uh, dog part, whatever, if it does happen, whatever, if you want to do it, however you want to do it, I, I don't care. I mean, the bottom line is, is that we all do it, it should be at least one, right? And the dog should be on. Right, Sorry. which is two separate ordinances, right. the leash law and the right. prohibition right. are somewhere plain and somewhere else. So do we do you think as a commission that we should let them know we believe in a leash law? Like is that part of our thing? I don't know if the leash law itself yeah. is, but certainly not a I, lot I, of pets on I agree with the greater heads on I, I I don't think we are here to talk about right. leash. Yeah, I think we're here more around from a from a park and rec perspective where you have concerns. With where the plant my place is, because I think where you're going, I think it's how many comments are important. Yeah, I believe it's like the comments from the parents or from people that are complaining that there are unleashed dogs on school properties. Uh, it doesn't have to be unleashed dog. It could be the person walking on a jackal with a leash drive to do high school to walk. Right. And they can walk through the they can walk across the field, but it's still a dog. On the track inside right. the high school track. Yeah, you so you want you want them on the whole that just keep them off the track and the field inside too. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, you just spend all time on the softball field. I don't want dogs or cats or it's someone. I mean, athletic walking. Yeah. Right. 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 Because there's wording in this new ordinance or thing, and anyway, I'll send that out to you as well. So, can I ask for a motion uh, that permits me to send this draft with some changes uh, in wording and the addition that the uh, commission uh, just wants the wants the ordinance committee to act immediately not to allow pets on, whether leashed or otherwise, on tracks or playing fields. Okay, that's the motion, right? Seconded? Yeah, take the on this up. Okay, any further discussion? Who motion, sorry. And second? I second. Oh, whatever. Okay, all right. Okay, Perfect. all in favor? Right. Right. I, would so use, yeah, yeah, I would use the term athletic facilities because that's going to cover your track, it's going to cover your plane. Yeah. And if you guys you you can take a look at the wording and let me know. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and then and you I'm, can I'm email that. Out, I'd like to get it out you know, Monday, let's say, because I know you guys work half a day. So if you could let me know the wording if you see something wrong in the or your website. Is, but yeah. Uh, I work before on Fridays, but yeah, and I'm okay, always sort of yeah, and then you can just email it straight to the ordinance committee because it, it doesn't need it. well. it's not going okay. to town council because it's going to the ordinance committee. You don't need it for the ordinance, you don't need a prepared agenda or anything like that. So you can just email it straight to the ordinance committee as the chairperson. I will, but yeah. I want your input. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Okay.
because that this past year they used two rooms to split the group up. So I think I'm going to schedule her in two rooms, just at least at the beginning to, to see what they do. I'm just not comfortable because she's like, well, some meetings you might have extra siblings and parents. Well, 30 people in this room when when the kids, which are about a dozen of them, are not vaccinated, just concerns me a little bit that I don't want to do like three well. So um, so I think that's the direction, and I'm just going to let her know that we will follow whatever they put in place for schools, um, then we will follow that guideline for those extra groups. So, we'll go from there. But there's a, so there's a sign out over there saying yeah. use that are closed. Right, so no, I, that's just the two rooms are closed. Just those two rooms. But the community said, like, I, I actually stopped here yesterday yeah. to come in, yeah. thinking I could, and then I saw it. So I drove out and I called Jen and said, Well, because, because technically the community center is the Park and Recreation Office, is open, which we have our hours listed, and it says that you can come in. But because we're considered a daycare center, because we have camp units, yes. then we are limiting access to the building because that's what the OEC wants you to do. We don't even, parents can't even come in to pass that front right. room. That's how it works. That's, that's where we're, we're doing pick up and drop off because they don't want people in the building. So we're, we're completely limiting. Other than the library book sale, where people will come in and just go right to the book sale and leave. Other than that, we're not allowing anyone else in the community center. But no. our director. Do the campers have to wear masks? Inside, everyone has to wear a mask inside. So that's why it says you have to wear a mask. Yeah. And then in the smaller print, I put on there from eight to five, because that's when they're in our building. So at night, obviously, there are no masks required. Like here, we will be here, no mask, unless they're not vaccinated, they're supposed to. But um, yeah, so during that time, everyone has to have a mask. Yeah. So, and that's, uh, that's, that's, I don't know if that's the CDC or OEC, one of that, that's their, uh, that's their recommendation for the program. And it's, it's funny, when they're outside, no one needs it, but I saw some pictures of, of uh, the Brits camp, and they're making their kids wear the mask outside. Which, uh, yeah, and these hot days, that's that wow. to do that. So, I work on that stuff, so I think we did So, so yeah, I mean, it's going well. And, the, and actually, the kids are fine with it. The kids, I mean, we don't have any issues telling the kids to keep their mask on because they're, they're so used to doing it. So, it's worked out pretty well. Okay. Uh, community senior center update. Beer year, doesn't matter. I mean, I went to the last Go one. ahead. No, we've got two forms oh. already done. I think it was at both. We had 25 to 30 at each. We have another one coming up July 20th at one o'clock at the senior center that we're pushing hard to get people to. Um, I expect to see a lot of seniors there. Teams usually, when we have the budget referendums at the senior center, there's usually a good showing of seniors. So I expect a good amount there. Um, subcommittee was discussed at the last council meeting, which was two nights ago, and supposedly at the July 20th meeting will be um, signed and appointed. Council. It'll be a subcommittee of town council, so it'll fall under town council rules and not through public meetings, minutes taken. We'll have two town council members on it, so I don't know about this anymore. So, um, I was a little disappointed in how council meeting uh, I did attend uh, because the sub advisory committee is going to, it, it, it is going to be one just like a, say an industry meeting or a town council meeting. So there's cost to the town for that. You know, hire someone to take minutes. Uh, it will be public, it will be on Zoom. And they're looking to the grant. You remember Joe Erson was got the town, I think it was 750000 they're using that for the architect design and all that, but they're looking to see if they can also use some of uh, grant monies to fund this advisory group. Um, I had a further uh, discussion with Kate Wall, the town clerk, uh, yesterday when I met with her because um, it was clear to me that the mayor had mentioned that the advisory committee is not to do public outreach, which I had, if you remember the draft, I said the goal, one of the goals is public no, outreach, is which is extremely important. But he's very adamant about uh, that that's really not the advisory committee's role, uh, and perhaps it's town council's role. So 
at the town council meeting, which is public, just like this meeting, so I do uh, I see me, and I said, and look how many people are here because no one's reaching out to them, no one's going into them. In this case, it's a big project, you need to reach out. It's your deal, figure out how to reach out. Mike Aronga, who's a council member, spoke, and I, I don't know exactly how it would work, but with two council members on it, he said, you know, uh, perhaps this could be part of our community outreach or whatever work we use. So I'm not sure how that works, but Kate Wall said, the next day uh, that the advisory committee has to be neutral. Um, you know, fact gathering, visit other community centers, um, which is the other thing that I made mention is that I appreciate, you know, two council members and uh, they are wants to add some people from the Board of Finance. Um, and then there would be, I believe, uh, Myself and Barbara Gombatz from the uh, Commission on Aging. Um, and then the staff would be assigned as well to, to work. So um, I said, this, this, these need to be doors. You need to visit, you know, at assigned times, we want to go to visit Newtown. Again, not the whole commission, but, you know, a couple of people. And then bring back. A questionnaire that we draft that we want answers to, um, so that we can put all that together. You know, lessons learned, how to do funding, uh, how to operate. You know, all those kinds of things. So, uh, you know, I'm hopeful that that's that they'll be able to do that. So, um, but the point about being neutral, uh, we commission has to be neutral. Um, so. That's fine. That's the rules. Um, we can certainly have meetings at different locations. So maybe, you know, because we want to, you know, reach out to different parts of the town. Maybe we have a couple of the advisory committee meetings at schools in the fall. Berlin Fair, there was a great um, recommendation by someone at the June 30th meeting. Hey, could you have a, uh, a table at the Berlin Fair? And that that's great. So I'm going to look into that, right? Uh, they did not videotape or Zoom the last meeting, and um, although I did follow up with two with your well, I asked, I asked both the mayor. Yeah. 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 You've been to commission on right. aging meetings and the acoustic center or around some of the looking at you there. The acoustic center or uh so that's why I said we gotta have a dry run, make sure this thing works at the senior center, make sure that Tom R. Perry, by the way, Victorian Bay and has so left, you know, so. mm -hmm. left the firm for yeah. yeah. but there so is another I met I met the new girl, her name is Dania. She's Do you have her contact me. information? No, I don't. Okay, so um Tom Art here is at the building commission tonight. I, I'm not sure why, but um, I did ask my husband to get contact information. So uh, I want to make sure that he can either do the presentation at the senior center, like everything's there for him to do. Uh, we have flyers already made. I told the mayor, the last of town with flyers everywhere. Uh, they're already, they haven't been printed yet. Uh, Kate Wall was very helpful. I drafted it and then Kate put some pictures of the proposal, uh, the beauty center, senior center on it. And uh, so, you know, like you said, we're trying to get the word out. So please get the word out. July 20th, 1 o'clock is the next one. Uh, we would be hopeful to have more than 25 people show up. But some very good comments. Um, the other interesting thing is, uh, your survey is done back in 92, in 2001. Uh, I have, I can't make copies of them right now because we don't have an advisory committee, you know, and I'm not on it yet. So but once I have it, once I will make copies for all of you because it's very telling. It's pretty interesting. Uh, question like, and I haven't read it throughout the whole thing. 
uh, are you willing to pay additional taxes for a community center with a gymnasium, community center with a gymnasium and a pool, community center with just a pool? 54% said yes. 71% wanted community center, pool, and a gymnasium. So back in 2001. So anyway, you'll, it's kind of interesting reading. Might be something that might be considered in the future. So, um, how can people that are not on the advisory committee help? Uh, we need people to come to those advisory committee meetings. So they publish, the free public. It would be great for you guys to come um, and spread the word and comment the things that people like, don't like. We'll be presenting whatever we're learning in the process, how to operate the options. The other thing that I was asked to do is on um, the scope of the advisory committee that was given to the council. The mayor asked me to make sure that we consider the Y option. Uh, the YMCA has been talked with. Jen, you might have been involved in some meetings. In the last couple of years, I was not. Um, where the Y came in and spoke senior center maybe or something and talked about, oh, we we run your community center for you and as an option and you know give us a 99 year lease, give us the land, we'll build it, we'll operate it, or maybe they just operate it. Many options. Uh, so that will also be looked at as, as an option. And whether or not that will be one select, who knows for reference, but um Rockville Connecticut is one of those. Look at Rockville, Connecticut, as to why that's a bad idea. They did that for they did that to why why a lot of money to our time. Yeah, they did not let them through. So there's, do not do not do not. Yeah, there's been conversations about it. So I said, put together some ideas that we've already presented about right. things that would be major problems. So uh never give never give a governmental building. To the hands of a private company that has no interest in serving the public. End of story. So, anyway, there are ways that in various towns, like you mentioned, Tom. Uh, so, it's okay. Uh, anyway, we will be visiting and we'll be, uh, I'm sure one of the advisory committees, and now I'm speaking as if I'm named, if I'm not named, you know, I don't know, but the Y will come in and do a presentation. I'll you know how they would operate, blah blah blah, whatever the deal is. But so that is an option at this. I had to add it to the, uh, the list. Um, network, uh, but we got to spread the word. And obviously, the Park and Recreation has a right. To, obviously, it should be very involved. In, and I ask you to please do that. And do not hesitate. Make comments. Um, no, I do it on Facebook. Has there been an article in the world citizen for this? So there was an article from a month and a half ago. Yeah, yeah but for the um, first one, I think. That was the other thing. This for the June 22nd meeting, uh, there was a posting um, on Facebook on June 3rd, the 22nd and the 30th meeting. Uh, if you go on the town website, there's like two different postings. It's kind of kind of anyway, Cape Wall, I know Jen's gonna work on it. They're gonna try and prove about these meetings. Um, I contacted the citizen, especially after seeing the 22nd return. So I contacted them afterwards uh, and I contacted the reporter that covers broke. The reporter wanted to do it via Zoom. That's again, I followed up. I got it through Zoom. I had other requests from other people. One of our commission members recommended, blah, blah, blah. They chose not to do it. Uh, and then I, I penned the letter, and the, the citizen said, We'll put the letter on their website, which I don't know anymore. Um, but they did not put it in the paper. The New Britain Herald did the same thing. I penned a letter for the June 30th meeting, and uh, I got plenty of time. I got a reply back, thank you. We'll be posting this, blah, blah, blah. The day before, on the 29th, I contacted them. I said, You never posted. And I said, the meeting is tomorrow night. Thank you. We'll, we will post. We'll, we'll have it in tomorrow's paper, the 30th. It wasn't. So, unfortunately, you're limited. There was a very good article in the Herald, though, 
prior to the 22nd meeting where they talked about there's two meetings coming up. Yeah. But as I told the council, you got to be consistent. You got to keep on going out to people. No one remembers. No one jots this stuff down. So, I remember the board. Well, that, and, and, and the mayor and, brought that up. You know, people, they don't turn up, and it's unfortunate. Hopefully, for this, we got to get people to turn up. So, uh, young people, old people, it doesn't matter. The young people actually have the biggest benefit for this because from the young all the way to the senior high. It's just Anyway, it's too bad they didn't record it because you could loop it somewhere. You know, they have them on YouTube. Our, our meetings are on YouTube. That's right. Yeah. The forms are there. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you can replay it any time. That's what, like, the, and Tom Arcari, the art, he just very, very good job. Yeah, so he, he did a great job. Right. And he's amended it. If you, even the 30th, there are a couple of changes oh, based on comments that you've heard from people. So, you know, so the concept is, is evolving. And that's why you guys continue to update. So is there a compilation of the comments that are on the Facebook page? You go on the original Facebook page, they link you to QA and M, uh -huh. and they have in FA, FAQ uh, questions, questions where they address all the Facebook questions, questions and all the answers. Yeah. yeah. So is that worth pushing to somebody at least to 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 no. Communications. Yeah. Right. To, to let them know that it's there or that's some questions and answers. Right. Or... right. It, it's, uh, well, we've talked, it, you know, I think the town has to do a much better job of communicating and getting things done and out there. And I suggested, like on Facebook, separate page just for this project. And it would be maintained. We would have that type of information, links to it, and things like that. Uh, also, I have on the town website provide people, you know. Uh, so, so, this thing's going to come to a referendum next for next year. Yeah. 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 So, um, so uh, we'll go to referendums. That's a town vote. That's right. Yeah. Right. And um, who comes out to those votes? Like, uh, if there's a budget vote. No one goes. So it's turn out it's like it's so, minor. It's it seems that it's turning out, right? So that's why you would expect to get that number. I I think with this project, because there will be a financial impact, I think you'll see um that there will be a big turnout, similar to the high school project. Um, maybe, maybe not as much, but maybe even more because it impacts all generations. Um, and I think there'll be those that oppose it, whatever the, the recommendation is or the referendum is. And by the way, the council will bring and decide what the referendum is. Um, it's not. It's not as controversial. It's, it's not like the police department or farm that. controversial. In other words, you could have to say even one of your political parties can oppose it. At 30 and million dollars, dollars, it's going to be controversial. I, I, my sense is that there will be those that oppose it and, and will do very, you know, do their job, put down posters, low boards, uh, opposing it. And then maybe hopefully there'll be those yeah, so that are for it. You have to get the constituencies that are going to want to benefit. This, whether it means you get the little kids out there at the corner you know, doing whatever, but you come up with a marketing plan to market the program so that not only now, but that you get close to the vote to have each of those constituencies go out there and figure out the push to their people and their groups and the benefit for them. It's not only that, but what you need, honestly, is a stronger council in that. Because if they wanted to get this done, there wouldn't be any. Really, yeah. we wouldn't be having much of a fight right now. Right? And because we have a lack of leadership in the town council and in the mayor's office, this stuff is currently happening. People aren't coming out to vote for, for just the basic. I mean, don't you have to figure out what our budget is? Is there a referendum no. for a budget change? Excuse me? There's a referendum for a budget line in it. There's a referendum. Hold on, Richard. I saw it on Monday. 
they're making some kind of budget change, so they have to have a town referendum. No, they have to have a town public hearing for a town council. Yeah, yeah, they do when that there's a, lot. a certain okay. transfer of money, they'll do it like right 15 minutes before the council meeting. And they have like a public hearing. Yeah. And it's public, so it's not. Okay. Yeah. But for the budget referendum, they have to do that every year. And then there'll be the second question. Let's say it's next April. There'll be the budget approval for the following year. And then there'll be a question on whatever is proposed for the community seniors if, if it's brought to referendum. But, but I will say, I am hopeful, I'm very hopeful, and I believe that there will be something brought to referendum for people to vote on. What that is, I don't I don't know I, until things are looked at and studied. But I think there will be something. Uh, I at the last June 30th meeting, someone asked the mayor, will the does the town council support this? You know, blah blah blah. And the mayor said, we will support and should support what the referendum vote is. Yeah. <laughs> but that's, you know, that's kind of kind of bad answer in a way. So it's a, it's, a, it's an answer. It, it's, it's a political answer, first of all. Well, yeah, it's a, but it's there's not enough, no, to be fair, you don't even know how we're going to operate it, you know, what the costs are to operate it. So to be fair, Maybe come November when they're running for office, it might be more appropriate and you might be able to get pin them down only because there'll be more information. Yeah. Right. So uh, but it is it's 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 a very positive quality of life issue to be considered, along with other considerations for the time. Okay, time to get started next week. Okay. Do we want to have a brief conversation about our audience and citizens? Not that I want to yes. long meeting, but yeah. I mean, you guys can vote next month, obviously, but I don't know. We want to have a discussion. Okay, so I'll, uh, I, I did just a little bit of follow up, talk to a couple of folks. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously, fellow's a great, great guy, has done a lot for the town. Um, but the people that are involved in Lilly that I spoke with, you know, they basically so happen a lot of other people done very similar things, maybe not umpires per se, but um, you know, other people have done other things um, and uh, not to take anything away uh, from the development at all. But um, you know, perhaps there, again, this is from other people. Perhaps there should be other people considered before we would consider this job. Um, but, uh, you know, so I, I just felt I needed to contact because I personally didn't know or don't know Jim, uh, but I know other people do, and, you know, he asked me to follow. <coughs> so that's the takeaway. The other thing is, the uh, question I have is uh, well, McGee is also used for software. Right, the school plays softball and baseball on that same field. So it's two fields. It's all in the back. Softball's in the back. Softball's in the back. Okay. All right. And is the field made to be? Because I don't think it has it. Wouldn't it say Catherine Lynn and McGee on the fence? That's the school. I didn't think it was all in its I mean, mainly used for school, but. So can we look into that? I think that just for our knowledge as well to understand if there's already a suggestion. Are we looking to name it? I mean, are we like no. are we need, we're not obligated to name it no. no, we're not. Just, have, just for your knowledge. We don't have to. It should be a fundraiser. I mean, I'm 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 I can mean, I can honestly think it's more reserved for a special. Well, I mean, I, I think there should be a packet that comes in with not just his family members with references. I hate to say it, but I mean, I don't know who he was either. So there should be like people that are our own baseball people that comes in with who vouch for it. You should be moved again. You know? I mean, 
to be much more. I mean, when we, when we did the rec spent tennis course, I mean, there's had kind a of petition of something of a couple yes. hundred people that were behind. Right. I see. Not just, you know, you know, I mean, I see what you're saying. There should be, there should be a, a groundswell of support for yeah. this type of thing. And, uh, you know, there's, there's grown baseball people that, you know, are, you know, we asked, you know, come in and vouch and submit whatever, references, testimony, and Is there a process for field nation weapons? Mm -hmm. There's a policy. We sent it out last month when we did Tyler Coppers to send out this one because I had just sent that last And Tyler Coppers. Yeah, the, the thing with the policy is, and we read it again for this meeting, mm -hmm. is that if you talk about volunteer, you know, volunteer comes to volunteer. And yet, um, you know, you look a softball. Not really a volunteer. I don't know what else he did. I suppose maybe a, a timeline or a resume should be submitted for that. Or like did this, or this. Right, she read it off, but she didn't submit it to him. Yeah, but my, my guess is it's difficult. So he did, he did see what he paid to do that, I wouldn't think. Right, Don? I mean, you the, the chief of all parts. Teaching the young part. Yeah, teaching the young part. No, no. He wouldn't be paid. He volunteered. Yeah. Yeah. Volunteer he volunteered. 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 But We're, I hired you to Yeah, of course. Just like referee. Yeah. Do you want a table? So I I mean, I don't think we need to vote tonight. I'm not even sure, you know, unless we have a motion to vote on it in the future. It's just there. Yeah, we'll table it to August so you can vote on it in August. I'll put it on the agenda. Well, unless something changes, unless like more information is presented to us, what's what's the diff? We don't necessarily have to. We're voting on. What are we voting on? Whether or not you're going to move it along to the next group to the board. Yeah, I can. I'll call Kate tomorrow and I'll ask her what this we don't process is. And you, you last last month when you did the last one, you said it was on a quarterback, paying the zoning, and then it comes out. Right. And that's, that's, how, that's how this would go as well. It's the same deal. Right. I just didn't put it on because we didn't have a lot. I didn't know. We didn't have a lot of information beforehand. I knew you guys wouldn't feel more comfortable voting on it. So I didn't put it on because it's time for a vote. Okay. I can ask Kate if the process needs a vote. Or if we just say we're sorry, we decided at this time not to vote on it. Okay, so I don't, I don't know the answer. So I'll have to ask. And then in the meantime, just take a look, see if it's officially named at all, just so that we know. Yes. So you guys are part of the uh, Hall of Fame. Right? I am. I am. Yeah. yeah. So um, the Hall of Fame member, but you said in Plainville they gave out the stupid service. They, they, they do that. They do, but they, they, they do, but they don't. That, it, in Africa, they not they, it's not considered a distinguished service. A distinguished service award winner is only a, not a person that volunteers right. or puts back to the community around athletics or other educational things. So we in the Hall of Fame, we also have a uh, distinguished service award, and we extend it also to perhaps people of distinction uh, that were at, you know, maybe not the best athlete in the past, but has some distinct distinction, you know, thereafter. Uh, so that that yeah, and that so, goes to people that are already Hall of Fame members. No, no, no. 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 Um, so, so just so say someone who had a positive value. So Brian Priest is not a good example because he didn't go to Burlington High. Having gone to Burlington High, though, and maybe he was an athlete, and he really, you know, has made himself known as a race car driver and things like that, distinguished. So we would present him with the Hall of Fame Distinguished Service Award. You know, perhaps if he was voted in. And again, you need to go to Burlington High. If you have, you have to go have gone to Burlington High. 
But see, the, the trick here is it's not like Jim's already in the Hall of Fame. Right. right. He's, he, he, he brought, right. He, right. Right. He did, he did all these great things as an athlete and our good nights and things like that. So, so he's already in the Hall of Fame. Right. He's in the Berlin Hall. Yeah. He has a nice map on the chart. Yeah, yeah, those are very Like the big motion to adjourn. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we all set? All right, motion to adjourn. Yeah, I'll take motion to adjourn. Anybody want to second that? Yeah, finish the second. Okay, finish the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.